The Western landscape has seen many changes over the last 100 years. Some were planned. Others occurred quite by chance. It was by chance that an alien plant known as leafy spurge somehow made its way to the Midwest and southern Canada in the late 1800s. During this period, northern European immigrants poured into the upper Great Plains and southern Canada area. Very likely, leafy spurge was in the bags of seed and grain they brought with them or imported from Russia that was to start them on their way to a new life. These immigrants had no way of knowing the damage the plant would cause in its new habitat. But here, leafy spurge had no predators and it spread like wildfire. By the 1930s, it was already considered a major threat to the rangeland in the Great Plains. Today, that threat includes not only the Great Plains, but the Northwest as well, including the adjacent prairie provinces of Canada. Leafy spurge is a formidable enemy. It is a tough, persistent, deep-rooted perennial that is highly competitive and very difficult to kill. A native of Europe and Asia, this alien plant has no known natural enemies in the United States or Canada. It grows primarily in untilled habitat such as pastures, rangeland, woodland, and roadside areas. The weed is dangerous because it quickly displaces all other vegetation. Cattle and some wildlife such as deer and elk will not graze in infested areas because the plant contains a toxic substance that is an irritant to the digestive tract and to the skin. If ingested by cattle in large amounts, it can cause death. For ranchers, the end result is loss of productive land and a decline in property values. For wildlife managers, the effect is a drop in certain wildlife populations. There are other consequences. Soil erodes more easily with leafy spurge as a ground cover, diminishing water quality and fisheries. The domino effect is that wildlife-related recreation opportunities are reduced. Leafy spurge can be managed by using a combination of techniques. Let's take a look at four treatment options. The first option is cultivation, practical with limited sized acreages and certain terrain. Herbicides are useful in certain situations and environments, but they are costly if treating large areas, and they cannot be used in all terrain, such as near waterways. Managed grazing with sheep and goats is a good alternative in that these animals can forage on the plant with no harmful side effect. Biological control uses natural enemies to reduce noxious weeds and works especially well in combination with managed grazing. Biocontrols are cost-effective, sustainable, and are not harmful to the environment. Although you cannot completely eradicate leafy spurge with biocontrols, you can keep the plant to a tolerable level that permits dominance of other productive grasses. We will focus on one particular biocontrol, the flea beetle, as a way to manage leafy spurge. We will examine, step by step, how to establish a biological control release area how to collect the beetles and distribute them within the release area, and how to monitor their effectiveness. The six flea beetles we'll be discussing were all introduced into the United States in the 1980s and 1990s. All originated in Europe or Asia with leafy spurge as their host plant. From $200,000 to $1 million has been spent on research on each of the six species to assure they are host specific. That is, they will not feed on any other crop or ornamental plants. A formal documentation process required under the National Environmental Protection Act confirmed the flea beetles posed no threat to the environment. To understand how the flea beetle destroys or damages leafy spurge, let's examine the life cycle of the flea beetle. During its lifetime, the flea beetle goes through a series of stages or transformations an egg stage, a larvae or caterpillar stage, a pupal stage where it resembles an adult but lacks wings, and an adult stage. Most species of the flea beetle produce one generation per year. 
Females lay as many as 100 eggs near the surface of the soil near the stem of the plants from April until October. The eggs hatch within one to two weeks depending on conditions. It is the larvae which do the greatest damage to leafy spurge by feeding on the root hairs and young roots of the plant. The plant then loses the ability to take up moisture and nutrients. As the number of insects increase, the impact on the plant will be more noticeable. You will begin to see damaged leaves, flowers and stems, smaller plant size, retarded growth and flowering periods, and sometimes plant death. The success of your biological release program rests on three things. A consistent approach in inventorying the release site, in the collecting and releasing of the flea beetles, careful monitoring of the project, and methodical documentation throughout the entire process. Using the reference sheet, let's take a look at the process. Documentation is critical. The data sheets are the story of your project and the primary reference for the next 5, 10, or 20 years of management of the area as a biological control release site. Following the steps outlined on the data sheet throughout the project will ensure consistency and the best chance for success. The first step in your biocontrol release project is to inventory your site. Before conducting any work, make sure your site has not been sprayed recently with herbicides or is a spot where herbicides will be used close by. Do not select a site with a high ant or grasshopper population. Use your form to record the physical characteristics of the landscape, which will be important in selecting the flea beetle appropriate for your site. After inventorying your site, contact your local county extension agent or the noxious weed coordinator for your local Bureau of Land Management or Forest Service office for recommendations on the right species for your landscape. Staff can tell you the collection site nearest you or where to order the insects if you are purchasing them from a supplier. If collecting the insects yourself, you must contact the land manager or owner to get permission. Collecting and releasing the flea beetles, as well as monitoring the success of the project, require a precise, methodical approach. Taking us through those steps will be Jerry Marks, Missoula County Extension Agent. In a choosing your initial site for an insect release is done with the thoughts of establish the insect so you can come back and collect. So you have to have enough of your targeted plant to build up the insects. An acre or more is desirable. Uh, you also have to have a site that's secured that will not be intentionally grazed by livestock that will take out your plants or sprayed with herbicides or that will be plowed up. Uh, it's also desirable to have sites that's not going to be changing ownership, um, subdivided, or those things that would prevent you from coming back and using the site. Other factors to consider is uh, sites that may have high populations of other kinds of insects, such as ants that are predators of your, of your desired insect, or grasshoppers. If grasshoppers uh, have known to be high population in that area, they will feed on your target plant and take them out. Once you've got your insectary established, uh, you can spread it to some of the other sites that are at, at a higher risk. Um, also pick sites that's going to fit your insect. With Apthona nigriscutus, you need south facing, kind of more of an open vegetative site, uh, rather hot. Uh, where Apthona lacertosis prefers loamier soils and it will do well in, in uh, higher vegetation. An important step is to mark your site so that either you or someone in your organization can come back and locate the site to see how your insect release is doing. Uh, some people have used wooden stakes, drive them in the ground, uh, painting them with a fluorescent color so they're more visible. A couple disadvantages with the wooden stake, 
They can become lost in taller vegetation, harder to see, and either big game animals or, or cattle can either break off the stake by rubbing on it or pulling it up. A more preferred method of marking your site is using a steel fence post, uh, driving it in the ground. Uh, it sticks up high enough so you can see it, and it'll stand the wear and tear of, of uh, both domestic and, and the big game animals. In addition to marking your site, uh, uh, make some reference points to it, um, either from a, a geographic location or uh, from a road site. Uh, it may not be you that's coming back to the site, so it's very important that you put some documentation down and, and put it in your files. Some additional steps you can take to, to keep track of your site is you can take, uh, use a camera, take a photo point of the site, but also take pictures all four directions, east, west, north, and south, from the point and, and put those along with the other documentation in your file. Flea beetles, generally the collecting method is using sweep nets. Uh, they're little insects. Uh, the adults will crawl up on the plants and can be easily collected uh, using sweep nets. The technique is to cover about the top third of your plants out here. Don't go too, too far down into the foliage, just the top one third. Uh, develop kind of a systematic um, flow to your sweeping, making about 180 degree uh, sweep. The flea beetles will come up on top of the plant. Uh, if you've got um, days or uh, rainy days or a lot of dewy days, it's much harder to collect. Your net gets wet and, and they don't collect as near as easy. So sometimes wait for your, your sunshine. Plants dry off a little and they're fairly easy to collect. Some of your sites where you see a distinct pattern where the leafy spurge has retreated and along the margins where you still have distance is often where you'll find some heavy populations. In other sites where there's a general thinning and you still have spurge out in there, you, you can kind of sweep that area. When you when you collect your flea beetles, you get them balling up in the bottom of your net. In addition to the flea beetles, you find all kinds of other creatures, grasshoppers, um, plant bugs, uh, other kinds of plant feeders, as well as uh, other kinds of seed. There's cheatgrass seed here. This kind of stuff you don't want to take to your new site. So the next step in the process is trying to separate the flea beetles from all this other stuff you picked up in your net. The next step, once you have your insects in the net, is figuring out a way to separate them from that other garbage that you've collected in the net. There's been another number of ways to try to do this from aspirators, but what we have found most satisfactory is a passive system simply using PCV pipe. Uh, this is, happens to be six inch, um, uh, smaller could work fine. We've found the, the six inch is most satisfactory. Cap at each end. Uh, some folks have used saw slices, uh, but we've used uh, drill holes. Uh, and, and these are small drill holes, uh, tenth of an inch, uh, uh, eighth of an inch. Um, the smaller works works uh, just fine. Uh, as you, if you make two larger holes, you'll find uh, some of the larger other insects that you've collected uh, coming out into your your other area. You dump your your contents of your net in here, put the cap on, and you put it in a white sack of some kind. These are pillowcases, white pillowcases. The insects are attracted to the white color. Um, you simply put them in there, tie them up uh, with a, a string, and let them hang for 15 to 20 minutes. The insects will come out of the, of the uh, PCV pipe into, into your case. It helps to have some extra hands uh, when you're doing this. Um, we have our pillowcase and a PCV pipe, and we'll dump the contents of this net now into the PCV pipe. We shake the, the contents of your net down at the bottom. Kind of slide the, the net over the top of the pipe. 
you shake the ball of material down at the bottom of the net into your PCV pipe. So we just dump these in too. Yeah. Put the lid on, pull your pillowcase up over the PCV pipe, draw the top together, tie a string around it to secure it. And let it hang for 15 to 20 minutes and your flea beetles will crawl, crawl out of these holes into your pillowcase. As Bill holds the sack there, you can see the flea beetles crawling out of the PCV pipe into the sack. You'll notice the, the flea beetles will crawl up the sack towards, towards the top. There's quite a few insects that have come out. We're going to see if we can get some of them into a, a vial. Shake the, shake the sack to try to move the insects down to the bottom of the case. Um, undo your string. Again, it helps to have that extra hand. Getting a hold of the PCV pipe, your lid, if you grab just the lid, you're going to find it coming off. You brush the insects off into the sack. Shaking them down as you go. You see into the sack that the insects are, a uh, number of them on the bottom, they're also crawling up the side. The idea is to shake the sack good now. Try to get them collected towards the bottom. Okay, shake the sack. I'm going to use a, a collection vial that's been calibrated into various uh, Number of insects, 500, 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000. Reach into the sack and scoop up. Number of insects. And we got about 750 in this vial. Um, there's a number of containers that you can ship insects in. Uh, some people have used the styrofoam type container. If you get a reasonable fitting lid, make sure the, the holes are plugged. We're using 16 ounce ice cream containers. Um, these do have some holes that need to be taped off, uh, otherwise the insects will crawl up there between that cardboard. Uh, it is also important that you use unwaxed uh, containers. The waxed ones often will collect moisture and, and drown your insects. Um, brown Grocery bags will also work satisfactory. Um, folding them about three times. Have a stapler on hand to staple them shut. Um, these won't take the as much. Uh, bouncing around is your uh, stouter cardboard containers so you need to lay them in uh, in your th in your um, ice cream cooler in ways that they don't get crushed put in some leafy spurge uh, collect some leafy spurge uh, it's important that you either collect uh, plant material that doesn't have uh, seed heads or clip the seed heads off because you don't need to be transporting those to your new site putting it in in the container, then uh, dumping the insects from the vial into your uh, shipment container. Putting the lid on, setting them in the cooler and they're ready to go. You need a cooler, some blue ice, I've got two packs uh, for this cooler. Um, it needs to, you need, one of the things to remember is insulate your, your insects from the blue ice. If they are shipped where they're right against the blue ice, that uh, freezing temperature can transport inside of the container and freeze your insects.
So you need to provide some kind of insulating material between the blue ice and, and your insects. A newspaper will work just fine or a piece of cardboard. Lay that in there and then set your insects on top and they will ship. You should make your release within, most desirable, make your release within 24 hours. Uh, you can keep the insects in these containers with the plant material up to three days. Beyond three days, you need to take them out uh, and, and feed them. For most of us, we don't have the facility to do that. Uh, so shooting for the target of trying to get your insects collected, shipped to the point of destination and released within 24 to 36 second hours is the most desirable. Um, they will keep in refrigerator satisfactory if you've got to keep them in there overnight to get out to your new site. Well, we're at the site where we're going to release these flea beetles. I've got my marker to the designated the site we're releasing them. I've located this at the edge of this uh, leafy spurge patch. For these are Aptona nigriscutus, and they like uh, little thinner patches of, of leafy spurge. There isn't too much to this other than taking the lid off and scattering your insects out. Um, around the area. If there's quite a few, quite a few sticking to the container, either brush them off or set down your container for a few minutes and they will find their way out into the leafy spurge. Every insect has a kind of what we call a desired number of insects per release site. With flea beetles we use 500 as the kind of the minimum uh, per release site. You can release higher numbers, make it what we call a super site, releasing uh, 2,000 to 3,000 insects at the site. It takes three to five years to build up enough insects that you have a collectible population. And releasing 2,000 insects will often shorten the time period up uh, by a year to get reach a collectible population. need to monitor your site to see if the insects uh, were able to establish. In monitoring your site, kind of go through a systematic process of checking it. Um, start from your fence post, sweep out a ways to see if you can pick up any flea beetles. And go all four directions. A lot of times these flea beetles will move away from your release site. and see if you can pick them up. Often at the, your, your release site, if they did establish, you will notice a change in the, in the plant community. Uh, your spurge, where it has had insect attack on it, will become much more stunted, and you get kind of a whole appearance in, in the leafy spurge uh, patch, uh, which is quite evident at this particular site here. Um, your insects will then be kind of concentrated along the margins of this, of the area where it goes into the more denser uh, spurge. Leafy spurge can be managed if we act now. Biocontrols are an important weapon in the war against noxious weeds, but they take time to show effect. You must be prepared to invest at least four to five years before seeing any noticeable result. With your help, we can make the land productive again. What began as an accident can be overcome with careful planning and aggressive action.